I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show. Steve Cole's new book is Directorate S, The CIA and America's Secret Wars in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Steve's earlier book, Ghost Wars, took us to the night before the attack on America by al-Qaeda, taking America to Afghanistan. This paradox, are we fighting the Taliban or are we fighting al-Qaeda? Are we fighting the problems in Afghanistan or are we resolving those while we find al-Qaeda? What about Pakistan? Are they hiding bin Laden? Are they running the Taliban against us or for us? How? So we come now to 2007. The Bush administration is bogged down deeply in Iraq. It's seen as a failure. The Democrats have taken the Congress because of the failure in Iraq. Again, Afghanistan is not a major piece of the story, but thanks to Steve's book, we go into the debates in the Bush administration because at this point, there was something called the Iraq effect. What was that, Steve? Well, I was sending uh, violence toward Afghanistan in different ways. One was that it um, introduced to the war suicide bombing and, and um, uh, truck bombing of a more sophisticated type. There's clearly, you know, in the 1980s war against the Soviets, the Afghan guerrillas did not carry out any suicide attacks that, that uh, I'm aware of. And even in the early stages of um, the war, the Taliban combat, come back. They were reluctant to pursue this technique. Um, it wasn't really honorable in some Afghan sense. Uh, but the ideologues coming out of Iraq who had uh, you know, created such havoc in, in, in Baghdad. These are, uh, are al-Qaeda. Mostly al-Qaeda. Yeah, yeah al-Qaeda becomes uh, the trainer for, for the uh, complex attacks that we now understand are al-Qaeda and Islamic State. That's right. I mean, they were never able in the Afghan context to execute those complex attacks with the full sophistication that was brought to bear against American forces in Iraq, but they nonetheless changed and inflamed the tactical war in Afghanistan. Our response institutionally is plan Afghanistan. We're going to destroy the poppy fields. How does that solve al-Qaeda, or is it meant to? Well, it was another paralyzing debate that grew up at a critical time in the Afghan war, because, um, you know, when you're a decision maker and you're just trying to figure out how can you turn a war like this around, you look around for models of success that you could maybe apply. And the Bush administration and the Obama administration later both saw Colombia as an example of something that had worked through long um, effort. And in the counterinsurgency efforts in Colombia, eradicating the drug crop was a critical aspect, both to prevent drugs from reaching the United States, but also to deprive the guerrillas of an independent source of finance. And so they applied that same theory in Afghanistan, but there was a debate because the people who would suffer as you eradicated opium fields in southern Afghanistan were the base of recruitment for the Taliban. And so the military... This is Kandahar, the south. Kandahar that, that and was, Helmand. That was yeah. the home of the Taliban. Exactly. Out of, coming out of Pakistan, which was... And they were centered in Aquetta, uh, uh, the part of Pakistan that's Wild West. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the... the uh, Drug Enforcement Administration and some proponents of the Columbia strategy argued we've got to eradicate opium because then we'll deprive the Taliban of finance and that will make them weaker. But the army, uh, the military uh, in many cases, and the Brits and others said, you know, you can't do that because you're just going to make the insurgency worse. You're, you're going to anger a lot of small farmers. You're going to deprive them of their livelihood. And the next thing they're going to do is join the Taliban and you're going to have twice as big a problem as you have now. That, that argument went on for years. It was never really resolved, but ultimately the Afghans made it clear that they weren't going to participate in the kind of aggressive trop, crop eradication that, that the uh, Drug Enforcement Administration in particular would advocate for. Politics in Pakistan. Musharraf has been the boss for many years now, but he has a rival, Benazir Bhutto, the daughter of a dead Prime Minister, President of Pakistan, and she enters the scene spectacularly. She came through New York on her way to Pakistan, you know very well, Yes. Uh, and celebrated books, um, uh, many TV sponsor, uh, many TV uh, specials on Benazir Bhutto, and she goes to Pakistan to campaign for the presidency, to lead a party to dislodge Musharraf. Now, these, the army's not going to embrace this, neither is ISI, because Bhutto is talking about going in a different direction. 
She is assassinated almost on camera in, de in late December of 2007. Is that the ISI? Um, whew, I think there's still an argument about that in a lot of Pakistan. They blame circles. the Taliban. They blame the Taliban. But the section of the Taliban that is um, believed to have carried out the assassination, according to several international investigations, one informed by Scotland Yard detectives, um, that section of the Taliban uh, has a complicated history with ISI. And the, the possibility that ISI officers or um, former ISI officers might have encouraged this is certainly there. Um, the, you know, the, the bigger policy picture uh, is that the Bush administration in the second term uh, tried out two things to try to bring this conflict under control. One we just talked about, which was to do the drug war in Afghanistan, and that didn't work. And the other was to bring Benazir Bhutto and Pervez Musharraf together as liberal relatively secular allies who would strengthen the, the modernizing forces in Pakistani politics against the radicals. But with, when, when Benazir Bhutto was assassinated, uh, that plan fell apart. And very shortly thereafter, Musharraf was forced from office because of growing radicalism and violence inside Pakistan. So it was a very dark period. Condoleezza Rice is Secretary of State in the second Bush term. And she has an assistant, Elliot Cohen. We've all spoken with Elliot Cohen. He's a colorful person. He writes very good books. And he has a formula that Steve quotes here um, about each time a new administration or a new general or a new State Department representative arrives in Afghanistan. How does the formula go, Steve? Well, he, 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 comes, he advises Condi Rice, you're getting a lot of happy talk. And the reason you're getting a lot of happy talk about this war is because every time a new general goes out there uh, for a six-month or a one-year command, they say, the situation on the ground is very difficult. Very, very difficult. Very, very, yes, very difficult. Yes, yes. And then Three months later or six months later, they say, we're making progress against the enemy. Turn the corner. Turning the corner. Right. And then right. at the end of their tour, they say, we've achieved irreversible momentum. And they go back expecting decorations and promotions. And then the next commander comes in and says, the situation is very, very difficult. And the whole cycle repeats. And, you know, it's, it's a very wry observation about kind of military Boy, is culture. it accurate, Steve. <laughs> yes. Boy, oh boy, is it accurate. If I had to take one quote in your book and say... <laughs> Besides the Leonard Cohen quote that you used in the beginning, <laughs> one quote, that's it, yeah. because we're still living it. Yeah. Elliot Cohen has, the, there's another great scene with him that I love where he's, he's flying in a helicopter with a colonel and he asks, because he's a military, you know, specialist, Cohen is, and he, so he asks the colonel, look, give me the tactical kind of flavor of this war. And the colonel says, well, you basically you go into a valley and you drive until they shoot at you and then you shoot back. And Cohen says... That's kind of a disturbing picture of the war. And the colonel says, it's a valley-by-valley -valley war, sir. And you think, wow, I mean, this, this feels like another war in, uh, in our kind of generational It, it memory. certainly <laughs> does. And, and in reading that scene, I, I, I relaxed a little bit because uh, we're still reporting on this war. Mm. And the, the new administration is going to charge in there and live through these, this same romance. Uh, and live with these same paradoxes. So in that instance, your book is living history and it's predictive history at the same time. It's, it's odd. Now, tough love. This is a wonderful chapter where you think, finally, the administration is facing up to the problem, which is the ISI. They're going to reform the ISI. There's a new president who is... Uh, Steve Zardari is laughable. Um, he worries about real estate in Sutton Place. I can't believe you didn't tell us that story to make sure that we got it, that we should not pay attention to Zardari. So Kalyani's now running the country. Right. What does reform the ISI mean? Well, to the CIA, it means get the guys out of Directorate S who are running support, tolerating, failing to arrest, providing sanctuary and other support to the Taliban because they're killing Americans. By now, the NATO surge into Afghanistan is underway. It'll get bigger and bigger over the next couple of years. And the understanding, uh, accurate based on history and political science, at the top of the military and the CIA is you can't win a counterinsurgency war if the guerrillas have deep sanctuary that you can't reach. And the only way to address that sanctuary was for ISI to change its policy. Um, the, you know, and so they, they went repeatedly to the leadership, Kayani, and made these demands. 
and Kayani uh, kind of rope-a-doped them in ways that the, the book describes. The book is Directorate S, The CIA and America's Secret Wars in Afghanistan. Steve Cole is the author. I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show.